I am excited to tell you that today we are going to make our buttons actually do something. So I'm going to dump in a few lines of text and talk about what this is going to do. We have a var element and we have this new class called script util. The method find child we're going to pass in two arguments. One is this variable we declared up right at the beginning, and this is a smart office created variable for the object controller.renderengine.content. And then this is the field we're, we're actually looking for. In this case, it's www.kuno. On this e panel here, when I do a field help, www.kuno. So scriptutil.findchild is used to locate the child control in a panel. So the method takes in two parameters. The first one's the parent panel of the element defined, and then the next one is the name of the element defined. Essentially, this var content is basically looking at the overall content of the existing panel, and it's looking for this name. And then if it finds it, it returns the name, and then also the text, basically the what I'd refer to as the content of that name field. So that's what the text is, the text inside that name field. And it dumps it into this var called element. Here I'm going to compile the code and run it, and you can see right down at the bottom that it basically pulls in the name, the element.name, and then the element.text. So let's look at another field. How about this language GB? So if I go advanced, show field info, I can see that is WR. LHCD, or I could just do field help, WRLHCD, and let's drop that in here. Compile, run, and there you go. It has the name and then the text that's in that field. The next thing we're going to look at is actually launching a program or URL. For that, we're going to use scriptutil.launch. Okay, so I just dumped in scriptutil.launch with Infor as our website. And what this is going to do is just launch whatever argument slash parameter I throw in there. You actually could also use this to launch an M3 program. Also, you can have it execute a file. And let's look at what that looks like. If I leave it like this, it's just going to run Notepad. Pretty cool. But also, I can pass in another argument and tell it specifically what to open up. And here, it's my text file located in that path. You can also launch M3 programs, which is one of the coolest things that you can use to streamline workflow. But in order to do that, you need to bring in the namespace mango.ui.services. You need to import that into your script. So in this case, what I'm going to do is launch MMS002. I'm going to drop these couple lines of code here. We're going to use the static property dashboard task service dot manager. We need that to be able to launch our program. MMS002. So let's do let's do an example that kind of ties all this in together. We're going to first add our button, and now then we're going to make our button actually do something. So I'm going to drop some code in. If you just took my previous tutorial, all this button stuff is going to make a lot of sense to you. So I'm not going to go through it now, but feel free to check out the video right before and I talk about the button. If I compile and run it, it barks at us for these two. These are new. I'm going to create an onClick function and an onUnloaded function. So I dropped in a couple of functions. What we're doing is we're creating this var and we're grabbing the content of the WWETRN field. If I field help here, that's this field right here. And then what we're doing is we're launching the UPS.com tracking number website. We're dropping in the content of that field. Now in order to get this to work, I need to add a couple more lines of code and then we'll try it out. Oops, looks like I got one typo here. This needs to be WW. There we go. Let's go declare this variable. We're going to declare it right here, right underneath our class name. Then right here, we're gonna drop this line of code. And what this does, is it moving the local variable to the global variable. Also note, make sure you have this import mango.ui services or it's not going to work as well. Okay, uh, oh, it looks like I got a typo. We need to fix this. Change this to that. And that looks good. All right, I hit a compile and run, but it looks like I 
had it coded as FedEx, but really I want UPS. And let's just change that right now. We'll refresh this screen, compile, run. There's our UPS button. And let's see if it all works. There it is. My UPS window just popped up within a smart office browser. <clears throat> That's because I use dashboard task service dot manager dot launch task. So dashboard task service launches it within smart office. Now if I want to just launch it normally through whatever my PC's default browser is, I need to go back and use the script util dot launch. So let's see what that looks like. As you can see, it runs the same exact program, but now it's external. And that's the difference between Dashboard Task Service, where you launch it within SmartOffice, or the scriptutil.launch, which just launches the program or URL. Great! Well, now you know how to create a button and make it actually do something. So stay tuned, and we're going to learn some other really cool things we can do with JScripting and M3. And don't forget, smash that subscribe button so you know what's coming next.